Hey guys, hey fellow DFSers, it's Friday afternoon. I'm your buddy Chopadong, and this is MLB Made Easy for DFS. What we're going to do is we're going to rock and roll through the standard system from front to back, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of surprise later on. We're going to we're going to tour a tool, if you will. Being that it's Friday, we feel like getting funky, and we've got a little bit of time left before lock, but it is starting to become time to get serious. So let's kind of dive in. Let's see where we are. Let's see where the ownerships are. Maybe see what we can't pick out for today and get our research started in the right way. Hopefully, you all had a good morning. You've had plenty of coffee. You're ready to rock and roll. Um, if you haven't ever followed me before, thank you. I'm Chapadong. I am a DFS Army senior coach and contributor, uh, one of the OGs, founding fathers, if you will, and the notorious Smallabala. You can follow me out on Twitter at Chapadong. You can certainly look us up in the free Discord chats, and you can tag me at Chapadong with any of your questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you or tell you who does know the answer. So look in the description when you like and subscribe the video, jump in and become part of the community that is putting five and six figure winners on the leaderboards every single freaking day. MLB, NBA, NHL, PGA, MMA, NASCAR, doesn't matter. We've got it all for you here at DFSArmy.com. Um, the easiest thing to do, of course, on the front page, you can read the Slate Overview article. It's great, five, four-star plays, etc. You can always look in here for our cheat sheets and such. But what I do personally is I dive in to the research station. And I come down here to a pitcher's tab. DraftKings, FanDuel, doesn't matter. I'm looking at the stats, and I'm looking really and truly over here at the Chop Shop for K-Score. This is how I pick my pitchers. Everybody does it a little bit differently. People can really dive into Sierra, Whip, Home Run per nine, Walk per nine, whatever. I tend to use K-Score. It is a strikeout matchup metric that I created myself based on a couple of different uh, strikeout percentages, what the pitcher does and what the opposing team does. And a high strikeout pitcher facing a high strikeout team is ideal, and that leads to big scores. But it, put it on, puts it on a sliding scale so that every you know we can compare apples to apples, if you will, and look at a mediocre strikeout pitcher who's maybe facing a high strikeout team or a high strikeout pitcher who's facing a low strikeout team. And how do they match up? And who is still the best one? That's the idea behind K-score. W-score does the same thing for bats, but it does it for WOBA. WOBA allowed by the pitcher versus the WOBA of a team. A good hitting team going up against a, a pitcher that struggles to get people out. That's a problem. It's going to lead to a high W-score and a good matchup for us. Last night we had a couple of uh, neat little calls with... You know, so some of the, uh, let me flip my page backwards here just really quick. And I don't want to waste too much time because we only got 15 minutes here. But if I look down here, Arizona, L.A., Cincinnati, San Francisco, and the Chicago Cubs, some of those guys were a little bit lower owned, and W score popped them out. And if you had the right bats in those offenses, they did enough damage that you could generate leverage in tournaments and leagues and things like that. That's what that number does. But... That said, we start with K-score for pitchers. When we bring the guys to the top, we see Otani, Scherzer, Peralta, Montas, Snell, etc. You know what? Let's go ahead and let's write those guys down. Or let's make a let's make a mental note. Click of those guys right there. I'll show you how I do it. I call it my little snipping tool. And a lot of times I'll do this. I'll kick that over to the side. I'll call it back up here in a little bit. But I'm looking for guys over 500. And on a big slate, we've got a lot of choices. But these are the guys, that also means we've got a lot of crap we can weed out and not even worry about. So I'm going to focus on these guys, right? And I'm looking for the guys that make the most sense in terms of dollars. Scherzer is a good cash game pitcher tonight, of course. But a Freddie Peralta for 2,500 less, a Frankie Montas for even 1,700 less than Peralta, they make sense. When you look at Scherzer's 556, it's only a 10-point and then another 15-point drop to those guys. So a 30-point drop to save $4,000? Yeah, I'm going to consider that. Am I going to run it in my cash games, my 50-50s, where I need a high floor? Probably not. But in my tournaments, in my leagues, and things like that, absolutely, because Frankie Montas and Freddie Peralta have just as much upside in the average start as a Max Scherzer does based on the teams they're facing. Granted, he's a better pitcher, blah, blah, blah. But these guys can go off and score 60 points in a night, too. That's what they do. You're just trying to catch those nights, right? Now, would I say spend another 900 bucks on a Blake Snell who has a 30-point lower K score than a Frankie Montas? I don't know. Probably not. The optimizer throws it in there. Fine. But it's going to depend on projections from those guys. I'm going to boost these guys' projections, maybe. And if I'm getting, I just want to see these guys, these top five or six pitchers in most of my lineups tonight. Whatever that is for tournaments and MME stuff, as long as it's these five or six guys, I'm pretty good to go.
all right? I'm going to flip the script and bring the W scores to the top for my stacks, the, the key stacks I'm going to start watching for. And I'm looking for big numbers. Duggar's not good. Lucchese's not good. Arietta. Snell. When Snell's on the high K score and the high Woba score list, he can go either way. You don't know what's going to happen to the guy tonight, so tread lightly. Frankie Montas up there a little bit as well. John Gray at home, right? Kyle Gibson, we saw him up there, almost made the list of players that I mentioned. These are guys to watch out for tonight. They're guys that you can probably even stack against. And then maybe throw a lineup or two with them as the pitcher in your lineup. And then you've got both bases covered. If he has a great night, you're good to go. If he gets blown up, you've got the stack. That's why I like MME. It allows me to run a lot of different narratives and a lot of different angles for cheap. Dimes, nickels, quarters, 50 cent pieces, whatever you want to throw out there. Maybe you're a rich dude and you got dollar, $4.44 center. It doesn't matter. They've got them everywhere. So you can play these games and really have some fun with it. So slide over this way, and I'm going to look at stacks like the Angels, the, the Padres, Giants, Mets, Yankees, Royals, Rockies, right? Oakland. This game, of course, could shoot out. We all know that, right? It's, of course, probably. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But after I'm done with those, and I've written those names down. Those are the guys I'm likely going to stack. Last night, I, mean, I took about the top 10 owned teams in terms of stack percentages. We see that on our leverage stacks tool every day. And I added in. I faded a couple that were kind of in, in middle of the roadish that I didn't have much confidence in. And I, then I added in those other lower guys like the Cincinnati's and the San Francisco's and whatever else. And I had a pretty good night last night. Netted a profit in MME. Not bad. Moving on. I'm looking for these trend hitters, though, as well. Who in those stacks do I like the most? And I take this number and I sort it out. And on a big slate like today, I'm not starting at 400 and 200 like I usually do. I'm starting higher, 425. And when I see that list is still too long, oh, doctor, we could really get some hot bats in there tonight. So I come down here, and I'm going up to say 450. Give me the 450. And still large. I mean, if I counted those up, we're 9, 12, 15. 15 to Lindor, 15 to Lindor, another 18, 21, 24, 27, 30 to Renfro, 33, 35, 36 names. That's a lot. I say 20 to 40, so it falls within the realm. If you want to knock some others out, you come up even on the ISO. Let's get the best of the best of it. I'm already at 235. Let's go 250. Knock a couple more names off of there. Didn't really work. Let's go all the way up. Keep going. Higher. Higher. 475. You're saying, my God, Chop, you've done lost your mind. But look at this. There are hitters that are hitting over a 475 and over a 250 ISO. 475 Woba, 250 ISO, over seven days. These guys are red hot. They're going to be guys that are going to be popular tonight, most likely. They're, hopefully, some of them are in good matchups. But if I pair, pair my list down that far, Oops, went the wrong way. Reverse alphabetize. That was for the drunk, the drunk test, right? Make sure you can say the alphabet backwards. But here we go. Arizona, Atlanta, Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Chicago, Colorado, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. Three Detroit dudes. Three. And they are never owned. Three KC dudes. Three Detroit dudes right there. Hot, hot, hot. Over a 475 Woba. Over a 250 ISO. Seven days. Matching up against Dallas Keuchel and Matt Shoemaker. Let me tell you something. If the Detroit KC 4x3 or 5x2 stack goes off tonight, I won't be shocked. Will I own it? No, because I'm stupid. But you might want to take a chance on it. I might actually take a chance on it. Toronto would be another one. You got three hotter than balls hitters in each of those three lineups. If they're facing a weaker pitcher, sorry for get, making you dizzy there. Zach Grinky, if he gets tore up, boom, smoke job. That that's that's how the West was won on these big slates. Is you get out there, man. I mean, you get out there, and you've got it. Basically, you've got some pitchers to look at, some stacks to look at that makes sense. Hot hitters, hotter hitters, and hot hitters within stacks that you might take. Why are we overthinking this game? That's as good a methodology as any out there you're ever going to read or you're ever going to find. You can go read hours and hours and hours of Harry Potter novel 
uh, length articles on the web and you're not going to find a simpler system. You're not going to find a system that matches up better night in and night out. This is just logical and super simple. So again, like and subscribe the video, comment, leave me a comment. I'll probably answer it back. But before you bail, before you think we're done here, let me tour off into a different uh, tool. I've shown you the leverage tool all the time with ownerships and grades and leverage ranks and all that good stuff. But today, why don't we do Neely's Carnage Report? Why not? Neely's Carnage Report is really funny. How many of you click these buttons? How many of you guys actually do the reading to learn the tools? When the tutorials are out there and when the when the links to articles are out there, how many of you actually click those and go read? Or do you just jump into Slack or Discord and go, hey, what does XWOBA mean? What does Sierra mean? I mean, don't be that guy. When the infant, when they took the time to explain it to you, get out there and go look at it, right? Because you're going to find a well-thought-out article all the way describing the basics of carnage scale of one to ten showing the potential of offensive firepower of a team lower number favors a pitcher while higher number favors the offense oh shocker extremely good for the pitchers purple very very bad is good for the bats so when i come down here i see urias i see peralta wheeler scherzer boy i'm stunned that some of these names were already on my k-score list oh, oh my god that's why k-score and vk score are in there because Neely and I go way back. That said, you can come all the way down here to all these nothing dudes, but you can look for the red dudes. You find some of the red down here towards the bottom, and these guys would probably be red. But you're looking at a match stream at Kansas City's in a good spot. Hmm, was Kansas City on the W score list? <gasps> oh my goodness, they were. Isn't it amazing how all this stuff overlaps and points to the same guys? So why are you overthinking it? Why are you getting, I don't care what tool you use. They're all pointing to the same people. Let's check the leverage stacks tool really quickly. Let's look over here on FanDuel. And let's see if Kansas City, uh-oh, not generating a ton of leverage tonight. Why? Because their ownership is up there for a big slate. That's why. They're going to be chalky. So? Let's go look a little bit more. Car X, Woba, and Woba. Right? Oh, Chopadong's metric. See that? Told you he and I go way back. Woba, X Woba's expected Woba. And this is that the pitcher's given up over his last five to six starts. So when I come in here and I look at these Wobas, man, I better be seeing blues and purples. And I see blue on Freddie Peralta. His X Woba's great. His actual Woba's great. And same with Zach Wheeler. These are two dudes on the slate tonight that you might want to consider. Their K-scores are blue. They're good. The Sierra is good. Their Sierra is purple. Really good. That's why they have low carnage numbers. They're good. You might not want to stack these teams against them. You might want to take the pitcher instead. But you come down here and you start seeing stuff like you start seeing some reds and some yellows and stuff show up. And I start looking at a Nick Tropiano and I see a good number here for Woba against but a bad number for expected Woba against. So if he normalizes or regresses tonight, Chicago going to thump him. See how that works? Show you how to use these tools. Look at these Woba numbers down here for Michael King. Boston's in a good spot tonight. Bad Woba, bad Woba against, bad expected Woba. It's going to be about the same. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit. 4.6 implied run total. And you've got some decent numbers here. In terms of K-score, so there's going to be some strikeouts, but there are going to be some bats doing some swinging and some damage, too. Does this squarely put you on Boston as the best matchup of the night? No, but it's one of the factors you might look into as part of your daily routine. It's not hard. Again, this isn't rocket science. We've laid the work out for you. And if you have questions, you click the link right there. You go right into the basics. You start reading about these dudes, understanding Carnage, using Carnage to find cash pitchers, using it to find batters and stacks, using it to find GPP pitchers, using it to fade GPP pitchers and stacks and tournament stuff. I mean, God dang, man. Go read the damned article. I'm closing out of it, so you got to go find it on your own. But it's right there in the link, and the tool's right there. So once you learn what the colors are for and once you learn what the columns are for, you can use this tool just like you'd use any other. Add it to your routine, okay? Happy Friday, everybody. Hopefully this works for you. Hopefully you set the domination station up right. Hopefully you're in there asking coaches questions because that's how you're going to learn. You learn to use the tools. You learn to use the fundamentals that build better lineups and produce caching lineups, winning lineups in a lot of cases, 
and you join us at the top of the leaderboards where you find our army helmets all the time. Peace out, homies. Happy Friday.